and the Junior Board of Directors is proud to support Faribault Community Television. Hi, I'm Katherine Donahue at Fair Boys Hardware, here to welcome you to this month's edition of the FCTV News. Let's take a look around and see what we have to get ready for winter. Hi, Dr. Michael Ritchie, Ritchie Eye Clinic. Thanks for joining me. As you can see, we're still in the midst of our pandemic, but as I like to tell everybody, we can't shut down with a pandemic. We have to learn to live with it. So along those lines, I'm not gonna talk about the pandemic today. I'm actually gonna go back to what I normally do and talk about eyes. So we're gonna start with a very quick overview of what is a cataract and do you need cataract surgery? But then I wanna focus on where is the technology in cataract surgery going today? So first, the quick overview. So here's a picture of the eye. The front of the eye is the cornea, inside the eye the lens, lining the inside of the back of the eye is the nerve layer, the retina. Light enters the eye, passing through the cornea, through the lens, focusing on the retina. Anything that interferes with light passing into the eye blurs vision. Anything damaging the retina also blurs vision. A cataract is the lens in the eye turning yellow. The lens turns yellow like hair turns gray. Happens to everybody, can't avoid it. Darker yellow it gets, harder it is for you to see. Now, think of it like you would a dirty windshield in your car. That windshield can be a little dirty or a lot dirty. It's never going to wreck the engine. That means there's never a time where I'm going to tell you, hey, you got to have cataract surgery. Because no, you don't. You can always wait. We could do it next week, next month, next year. Never hurts the eye to leave it there. But at some point, you're going to come to me and say, hey, I need cataract surgery so I can see better. Well, that's how we know you're ready. So, we do a surgery, I make a tiny incision in the eye, I've got this little tool that looks like a tiny little vacuum cleaner, I break the cataract up and I vacuum it out of the eye. I want to preserve the outer shell of the cataract, we call that the capsule, because I'm going to put the new lens right inside the capsule where the cataract was, so it looks like that when we're done. Now, obviously anytime you operate there's a risk. With cataract surgery the risks are minimal but real. Serious vision threatening complications can occur. You need to know about them. Infection, blocked blood vessel, hemorrhage, less than one in a thousand. Retinal detachment, less than one in 500. Minor things are a bit more common. Swelling, pressure, inflammation, about 1%. Knowing all that, it's your decision. Does my blurred vision bother me enough that I wanna have surgery to see better? If you do, we fix it. Now, that's the fun part. Let's talk about fixing it. When we take out the cataract, we're going to put in a brand new lens. That brand new lens has focusing power for everybody. So in essence, cataract surgery is also a refractive surgery. That means when we do this, we're going to change your glasses prescription. So we can change it by guess or by golly, or we could change it by choice and we can specifically target a specific outcome that's tailored for you. This is what cataract surgery upgrade options are all about. Now don't get me wrong, standard surgery is not substandard. In standard surgery, we're gonna measure the eye, we're gonna calculate the implant, we're gonna build as much of your glasses prescription in as we can um, using standard techniques. What that means is that we're going to get you really close to seeing as good as we can without glasses. But what we can't do is we can't specifically correct astigmatism. We can't use a lens implant that has a bifocal system built in. And so the vision with standard surgery is often your best vision with 
a little correction in glasses. But, but understand, standard cataract surgery with glasses if you need them is the best vision you can get. So there's nothing substandard about it. Upgrade options are all about how do I try to get that best vision and minimize glasses? And one of the techniques that we use involves lens implants that have a bifocal system built in. So in the past, we've used lenses with trade names like the Array, the Restore, and what they try to do uh, is build a bifocal, trifocal system into the lens implant. Drawback, I mean it works beautifully, you get the full range of vision, distance, intermediate, and near, but you also get some glare at night. So, latest technology involves lens implants with names like Symphony, Panoptics, and Vividi. And these are lens implants that try to give the same range of vision, but minimize the glare at night. So, the newest technology in lens implants helps to minimize glare at night, does not eliminate it, but statistically speaking, 97% of people will say by the end of the first year, I don't have any glare at night, or yeah, if I have glare, it doesn't bother me, I don't notice it. So, what we're trying to do with the new technology is give you the full range of vision without glare or without glasses, but minimize the glare at night. Now, what's working very, very well is kind of a mix and match because we have one lens, panoptics, tends to give people better reading vision, but computer distance might be a little bit worse. Whereas Symphony and Vividi are good at distance and computer, but readings maybe not quite as good. There's also some evidence to suggest that if you have Symphony in one eye and panoptics in the other, not only will you have better reading, you could very well have less glare at night. Now, the newest lens is the Vividi, made by the same company as Panoptics. So what they want me to say is, you have a Vividi in one eye and Panoptics in the other. But the reality is, Vividi and Symphony are very similar in their design and how they, they're very similar in their goals. They're a little different in their design and how they're made. Vividi now is brand new. Um, in fact, uh, a very limited um, supply. So I'm able to put in Vividi to get a good feel for how they work, but they're not yet generally available. Symphony, well, we have great experience with. We've had that for a number of years. Panoptics is a little bit newer, uh, but it's been around for a couple of years now. So we have pretty good evidence on how these work. The key to this is for you, as the one having cataract surgery, to make a decision. Does this new technology interest me? Knowing that there's some definite advantages, full range of vision, but there's also some notable potential disadvantages, notably the glare at night. Second one is a little bit more subtle, and that is that I give up a little bit of contrast sensitivity. So what is contrast sensitivity? That is your vision with bad light. So dusk and dawn, just not gonna be quite as sharp. And that's because we're trying to give you a greater range of vision. Single vision lenses like we use with standard surgery, no loss of contrast sensitivity because everything's focused in one spot, but you need glasses to give you that full range. So. Tremendous pros and cons with all of these options. But the biggest thing to keep in mind is taking out the cataract is what makes your vision better. Whichever option you pick, standard, you really can't go wrong. You'll wear glasses as much as you need to. But the upgrades offer the option to give you a greater range of vision, more independence from glasses, and potentially free you from glasses. The downside being, the potential for the glare at night. A lot of information. You have questions, check out our website. I've got information there. Or you can give us a call, come on in and see us. Thanks for joining me. Mike Ritchie, Ritchie Eye Clinic.
perfect. That's good. with Riverbend Nature Center here with some exciting programs for November. On November 4th we have Walk or Ride with a Naturalist where you can come explore Riverbend Nature Center guided by a naturalist to see all of the seasonal changes that are happening. On Monday November 9th we have Science Day which is perfect for homeschool and distance learners. They're hour-long programs with two different topics. The first topic is camouflage critters and the second topic is survival. So you can learn about two different topics on that science day. On Wednesday, November 18th, we have a virtual lunch and learn with Claire Lacan from the U of M Extension. She'll be discussing the importance of insects in our ecosystems. On Monday, November 23rd, we have Science Day for sixth through eighth graders. And the two topics that we'll be exploring that day are decomposition and survival skills. Those are hour long programs for each topic. And you can choose to sign up for one topic or for both topics back to back. On Wednesday, November 25th, we have Adventure Day Treasure Hunters. So kindergarten through fifth graders can enjoy a day out at the Nature Center, learning about nature and exploring outside and having a lot of fun. There are scholarships for Adventure Days and science days on our website at www.rbnc.org slash upcoming dash programs. Science days and adventure days are brought to you by Union Pacific Foundation. We hope you have a wonderful November and come on out and enjoy the Nature Center. Hey, it's me, Miss Denny. I'm the children's librarian at Buckham Memorial Library, and I wanted to share what we have going on at the library during the month of November. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see. Uh, right here, I have uh, up on my screen the library's Facebook page. So if you go to Facebook and search for Buckham Memorial Library, you'll find our Facebook page. The direct link is facebook.com slash Buckham Memorial Library. And this is probably the best way to stay uh, up to date on what's going on at the library. On the left hand side here, you'll want to click on the events tab. And that will bring you to a list of all the events going on at the library. It's, we keep it really current. And what we have going on right now for youth and families are the following. There's a five minute bedtime story held on Tuesday nights and you don't have to do anything to register. Um, you can just hop on our Facebook page every Tuesday at seven o'clock and I will be there sharing a uh, short bedtime story. And those stay on our Facebook page for a while. So if you miss it, if you can't join right at that time, don't worry. You can go um, and click right underneath events for videos and you will find, find um, any past story times I've done. So we'll go to that tab in just a second because there's more there too. And then um, if you would like to do more of a in-person virtual, I do a story time on Zoom on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And uh, just to keep every, everybody safe and make sure we don't have anyone joining that shouldn't be, I don't share the link to this publicly. So you do need to email me to register and, and space is limited just so we can keep it manageable. Um, but if I get enough interest, I will certainly add an additional day. And those have been really fun. Um, we've had quite a few families who have joined me. Again, that's every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And uh, we share stories and we do kind of like a show and tell. I've enjoyed meeting everybody's pets. 
Um, another thing that's going on is the weekly read. You can find me on our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube and look for Buckham Memorial Library, you'll find me sharing uh, a chapter book. Currently, I am reading the original Boxcar Children book, the one that was very first created in 1924. It's no longer in the public domain, and so you can find me sharing a chapter or two every week uh, on our face, or excuse me, on our YouTube page, and those are recorded and saved, so you can go back and find them. There's a playlist um, of eventually will be the entire book. And then previously, I've also done Alice at a Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So you can find that uh, on our YouTube page as well and enjoy those. And then look for future, um, I'll be doing another one after I finish the Boxcar Children. And of course, we do still have um, our events for uh, the older grades kiddos. There are two book clubs, Books and Brownies and Pizza and Pages. Books and Brownies is for grades two through five. Pizza and Pages is for grades 6 through 12, and, and we're currently meeting on Zoom for, for those uh, programs as well. So click into the events for more info, and then if you have kiddos of those ages that want to join us, you do need to register so I can get them the Zoom link. Same thing, I won't be sharing that publicly, so we can keep it as uh, very safe. And then our Teen Advisory Board, that's what TAB stands for, we meet on Zoom as well once a month. Um, and we, that's for uh, students in grades 6 through 12, and we meet to talk about ways to uh, make sure the library is a great place for kids and families. Okay, and then if you go over to the events, or excuse me, to the videos tab, you will be able to find a whole bunch of different things. Some library staff have been really creative sharing programs with you online, and so you can just see uh, under latest videos, there's some of my bedtime stories. And then we have a new program that just started up last week, or, or earlier in October, rather. And it is of Take and Make Projects with Linda. She's our crafty staff member. She's really good at making awesome uh, crafts. And this is a video where you can watch her make a Halloween card and um, then get the... Uh, the materials from the library to make it at home following along with the video. So by the time you see this, it will be something else or there will be something coming soon because Halloween will be long over by the time um, this video airs. But, but I just wanted to give you that idea um, and to look for those future make and take, or take and make rather, projects with Linda. And um, so there's that playlist, more projects will appear here. And then Annette has some videos on how to make face masks, and I think she has more in the works. So if you want to watch one of those, those are available right now. And then, of course, there's my story times. And Bob on our staff, he's our tech kind of uh, technology guru, and he's been sharing information about 3D printing. And so he has quite a few videos um, that you can watch and learn more about 3D printing. So this is a great place, Facebook, to come and learn more about what's going on at the library, but it is not the only place. Another important place to check is our website. So the library's website is fairbow.org slash library, or you can go to just the fairbow.org and then click on the library tab, and you will find all the information going on um, at the library there as well. Um, so on the main page, it has information about the services we're currently offering, browse and go visits with an appointment required, and then lobby pickup. And the current library hours are listed right there, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. I do want to make a point that, you know, anything can change at any time. Of course, that's what we're all used to now, right? Change is the only constant. And so the best thing to do um, is call the library and find out the current situation. Um, and then you'll need to call anyway to, to schedule um, either a lobby pickup or a browse and go visit. And there is more information here on the website. You can click on browse and go visits or click on lobby pickup and get more information about both of those services. And then the rest of the website has all of our awesome electronic resources. And so it talks about how our catalog now has a mobile app, which is great. I highly recommend downloading that. You can get it for your Android or your iPhone. 
And then you can link to the Search the Library catalog. You can go into your account where you can see what you have checked out or renew items, um, make requests. You can even pay fines in your account. And then there are other tabs. If you wanted to ask a question, you can do it uh, by clicking one of these links here, Ask a Librarian, and you can ask us anything through that and we'll get back to you uh, either by giving you a call or responding via email. And then um, if you don't have a library card and you would like to use our electronic resources, you can get an electronic library card through here. Um, and if you already have one, but maybe your card's expired, they expire every couple years just so we can keep you up to date and keep your info um, fresh. And you can click here to renew an expired card. And then we have all these great online resources as well. There's OverDrive for eBooks and audiobooks and magazines even. There is um, digital magazines uh, additional right here. Over OverDrive and Libby have those. And there's Tumble Books, which are eBooks just for kids. There are some really great ones on there. And what I love about those is that you have the option to read it yourself or to have it read out loud to you. And that's really awesome for kids, especially when they're learning how to read. Hoopla is a fairly new service that we added, and that is a really awesome resources to stream movies, music, eBooks, and more with your library card, and you can borrow it instantly. There's no waiting. So even if 15 people wanted to watch the same movie um, from different locations, it's not going to matter. There's no waiting. Everyone can watch it. Uh, there is information about publishing your own ebook or reading others. There is information to learn a new language through Mango. There's like 70 some languages through Mango, including Pirate. It's a really fun um, and great uh, application to learn a new language. And then we also have homework help. This is really important right now with our. Um, you know, depending on what's going on with your school situation, regardless actually of what format you're in, this is a useful tool because there are live tutors available every day and you can log on and ask them for help through live chat with pretty much any grade level all the way through college and just about any subject matter. There's an adult learning center with help with job, um, working on your resume and things like that. And then, um, and same with the live online career help and the test prep. Those are really great resources um, if you have to take any sort of skill test. Um, it, there's just some really awesome resources. So I highly recommend checking out the library's website if you haven't done so before. There are a lot of resources out there that I think people really um, weren't aware of or um, maybe didn't know about, and they're just now starting to realize we have them um, because of the pandemic and um, a lot of things shifting to online. So this is a great time to explore it. And so if you have any questions, I would recommend giving the library a call or using um, one of those uh, ways to contact us, either through the website or the Facebook page, sending us an email. Um, we'd love to hear for, from you. And uh, I hope to see you soon and take good care. Bye-bye. I'm Jessica, I'm the pharmacy manager here at Hy-Vee in Faribault, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, COVID testing options. So if you need a COVID test for any reason, whether it be that you have, are having symptoms or you need one for work, or you just want to know um, what your status is, um, we do offer free testing um, at Hy-Vee. Um, that is available through our drive up, so you never enter the store, especially if you're symptomatic. We would like you to not come into the store. Um, you'll stay in your car the whole time and you're going to administer the test to yourself um, with a tiny little nasal swab that just goes right into your nostril, not, you know, all the way back. It's a very easy test. It takes less than five minutes and you're in and, in and out through that drive through so it's very quick and you get results within three to five business days. So uh, that is a good option for you. And if that's something you would like to do, um, you just go to do I need a COVID-19 test.com. And if you Google something similar to that, you'll get right to that website. You go in, you register, you make an appointment, and then you'll get a voucher. 
um, that you can either print off or just bring it with you on your phone and we'll write a paper voucher up for you. So it's very simple, very easy. You can even do it the morning of. You know, you wake up, you've got a tickle in your throat and you wanna just make sure that you're safe and, and good to go. You can just go to doineedacovid19test.com and you can come into Hy-Vee through the drive up and get tested. Um, so that is something we're offering here at Hy-Vee. Of course, if you have any questions about if you should get tested or not, um, you just give us a call. Uh, the testing is 100% free. Um, so there's nothing for you to pay. You don't have to put any insurance information in. It will not get submitted to your insurance. Um, so it is a really great option, um, especially if you don't have insurance or would like to be covered um, that way for a free test. Um, we're also still offering flu shots right now. November is a fantastic time to get your flu shot. Um, we start seeing the flu come around in November, so definitely get your flu shot before the end of November. We're offering that 20 cent fuel saver with every single flu shot. We have plenty, do plenty of doses, so don't worry that we're gonna run out. There's no appointment necessary. You can come in anytime. It's something really good to do this year. One thing you can do to protect yourself from the flu. So stop in today, get your flu shot, and if you have questions about COVID testing, please give us a call. We have been busy at ACE getting ready for winter and Christmas season. We've got all of our Christmas displays set up. We've got the shovels and ice melt and snow blowers ready to go. In early November, we will be getting in our shipment of fresh Christmas trees, wreaths, boughs, and we will have a good supply of porch pots decorated and ready for sale. So come on in and check out what we have for the season. Hello Faribault, Nort Johnson with your Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Uh, proud leader of your Faribault Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. This is a great town, um, working for some great people. And the message today is going to be, it might be a little more warm and fuzzy than you're used to getting from me, but I wanna share a couple of things. First of all, uh, we just finished up yesterday our strategic planning session for the Chamber of Commerce. With, uh, which included a big review for the year 2020. And then we talk about uh, what's going well, what maybe we could work on um, for 2021. This might come as a surprise to you, but 2020 was a bit odd for us as well. As it, that way for all of our members, um, all of you out there uh, with different things going on. Hello again to my mother. Um, up at uh, Pleasant View Estates. Um, our friends there have all had uh, particularly tough times during this uh, pandemic. So a couple of quick things that I think are gonna be fun though. Uh, and, and the first one's a big reminder. I'm gonna start out with the mission statement from our Chamber Ambassador Group because it's relevant to what I wanna share. This is a new mission statement uh, created this year, chamber ambassadors work with their loyalty, passion, and dedication for the shared success in their careers, businesses, and community. So shared success, and that's the point that I wanna make about shopping local. So dollars spent locally on average make their way back around a community seven times. So when I buy spray bottles down at Ace Hardware from Joe and Catherine uh, to use for sanitizer here at the chamber, uh, those dollars are then put into paychecks for staff. They're put into sponsorships that they do for local events. 
And then the dollars that land there in paychecks of their staffers pay, it pays rent, it pays utilities, they buy gas and groceries. They go down to the Paradise Center for the Arts or down to the Depot or you know, shop at Fairway or Hy-Vee and then they're recycled again. So you understand how that works. And importantly, that's the shared success of Fairbo. So when we shop local and we invest dollars that we've earned locally back into our economy, it continues to help us grow. So that's one reason to shop local. The other reason is we've got great offerings in this town. Make your way around all the little places, Paddington's, you've got, you've got shops at the mall now. The downtown has some great things going on again. I have mentioned a few. I'll encourage you to tap your own memory bank. Think of the places that you could be spending dollars that are otherwise landing in Amazon. It's pretty easy to hit that button, I, I know. Um, but we have those offerings here. We want to support local, keep our businesses thriving so that they're here for us tomorrow. So thanks for your consideration and thanks for your investment in Fairball. The next item I wanted to quickly bring up is uh, your Chamber of Commerce has worked incredibly hard to still pull off as many events as we can and follow the safety mandates and suggestions that are put out there by the Department of Health and by our parent organizations um, as far as guidelines. So we're happy to report that we've pulled off almost all of our events for 2020, all in modified fashions with COVID safety plans. Um, and the final 2020 event is yet to come on December 5th, Winterfest, we'll have our fourth annual Winterfest here in Faribault downtown. Fireworks, lighted parade, snowmobile club and show, and we're going with the outdoor dance again. So we'll have a band, we'll have music. It's going to be a great time. Remember that December 5th. Um, come on downtown, wear your face masks outdoors, because you don't want to anyway, it's winter, and enjoy another great lighted parade and a set of fireworks. Again, support local. Thank you for everything, and have a great rest of 2020. Society. My name is Sue Garwood and I'm the director here. Right at the moment we are in our rare book room that is also the office of our new curator which I think you all met uh, in over the course of the summer and I'm here because I wanted to show you one of the new uh, projects that we've been working on. Um, we've actually been partnering with the Northfield Historical Society and together we have evolved what was previously the Northfield History Collaborative into the new Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection. So the collaborative, which actually started in 2007, um, was focused on creating a one-stop shopping spot where people could look at and do research of things related to Northfield, specifically using primary resources. These are not books where somebody's written about the things, but rather the actual documents and photographs and uh, artifacts. Um, but the focus of that collection, it's been actually for 14 years now, was really on Northfield and Northfield related topics. And to be frank, when we established the collection or the project back in 2007, from the very beginning, the plan was that like an onion, it would grow with each new layer when it was ready. And Northfield has a lot of resources and a lot of great history, but there's not a lot of new that's left to tap there. Um, so 
it was time. It was time to expand to the rest of the county. And so with great pleasure, um, we are here to chat about this new Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection. This is actually our website, our own website, the Rice County Historical Society's website. I always add that at the very end of the episode, but I'll share it here now too. Our website is rchistory.org. And when you come to the website, uh, if you click on uh, up here, it's local history online. And the very first one is access the Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection. And that will bring you to this page. You can, do, you can get to the collection a number of ways. You can click on one of the uh, varying partners or collections there. Everything from Bridgewater Township, Carleton College, Cristala Church, and City of Dundas, and, and then uh, and so on. Or you can even just simply click the logo, and the logo comes to the page. This is the Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection website. Um, and really, this is the portal, what we call the, the doorway to the overall collection. There are a couple of ways to search the collection. On the left-hand side at the top of the sidebar is a search engine or search area. And you can type in uh, what you're looking for. You can also, which can search all collections or you can search any one of the targeted collections. We're gonna search World War I. And uh, specifically, we want to look at the Rice County Historical Society's collection of World War I related material. I don't know if you can see it there, but I'm not, there are lots of ways to enter in World War I things. You wouldn't necessarily think so, but in some cases you could do WWI, capital letter I, or the Great War. In this particular case, I'm interested in, because I know the collection a little bit, I'm actually entering the word world, then a space, and the word war. I'm not entering more because I'm not sure if it's I or one. So just like we've done before with Dolby Database where less is more. So if I am not sure how to phrase it, I'm just gonna leave that number off. We might get some World War II related things, but at least we know we're gonna get World War I in among that stuff too. So click the search bar and as you can see, we are actually being directed to Carleton College. They're, they are a key partner in this process. The artifacts are being, um, they belong to each individual partner, but the digital portal is a link to Carleton College's website where all of these things are being hosted. This is um, one of their phila uh, philanthropic outreaches to the general community wanting to be a partner in local history. And so they are making a portion of their uh, content DM website where they host their own collection. They're making a, a corner of that website available to us as well. These are all artifacts and documents and photographs that we have here at the Rice County Historical Society. And these are online. Um, everything from uh, some really fabulous pictures and posters. Um, it's kind of neat, the, the idea that gardening was considered to be uh, a fruit to victory or a way to, uh, to help beat the war. Um, and and um, there are also, of course, lots of photographs. Uh, these are fun, in, or interesting, I should say. These are interesting. Each of the World War I soldiers from Rice County also has a World War I file or a record. This particular record I just randomly clicked on was of Thomas Joseph Rowan. And in this collection, there's the file folder. There happens to be a note that was written. Um, this corps was organized to go on over Siberia and Russia to try and put the Trans-Siberian and Russian railroads in condition to handle ammunition, supplies, etc. I happen to read cursive writing well, but you don't have to worry about that because it's been fully transcribed below that. Um, so that's kind of neat. And you can see down the right-hand side all of the different pieces. There's a second page uh, to that note. In fact, even a third page to that note. There is a military service record for this gentleman. Um, and it's actually several pages long. 
and and once again with each page uh, volunteers for the for the uh, digital history collection have actually gone through and did a full transcription of everything that's handwritten because we understand that sometimes handwriting is tough to read and that's just for this one artifact or this one uh, portion of the collection we'll go back to the overall collection and um, there are neat way, other neat ways you can sort through. You can sort through the date of the creation. Um, you can take a look at the different topics that have been categorized there. Um, some of the material, if you're really interested in the home front, for example. Um, these are all things that are related to what was happening here at home and home front related during World War I, etc. There's a whole lot more than just World War I. As, as you saw back in the, um, in the initial uh, collection at the Northfield History so Collaborative th This site. is actually all of the artifacts that we currently have, we, the Rice County Historical Society, currently has as a part of the Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection. As I mentioned er, right away, this collection actually started as a part of the Northfield History Collaborative. And so the things that are currently up are mostly Northfield related. However, as we just saw with World War I, there's a lot more than just Northfield. There's an interesting collection of Bishop Whipple's sermons that we've added and, and so on. Um, but it is, a, it is a collection that is our hope to grow. Uh, as I had mentioned again right away, we were an organization that started in 2007. So over the last 14 years, we've been adding Northfield related things. And now we're ready to expand to the rest of the county. This is going to be something that's going to continue to grow slowly. We, it, there's um, a lot of work with all that transcription, but it's key in order for the material to be easily accessed. And so we really need to make sure that we do it right. Um, this is something for which we are definitely looking for volunteers. We're looking for organizations or churches or other groups that have larger collections that they maybe of their church history that they might want to share and have us add to the collection. So this is, uh, we've just turned this website on or made it go live as they say <clears throat> and are eager to like have to take a, a look at the things that are on the portal and the the site itself you can find it by going directly to the Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection website that's at nrcdighistory.org or you can go to our website the Rice County Historical Society's website that's at rchistory.org Go to the lo local history online links, click on the first one, access the Northfield Rice County Digital History Collection, and you'll find us right here. If you're interested in helping out, perhaps with scanning, or maybe you've got a collection or your organization has a collection of material that you'd like to perhaps add to this We're here site. at the Rice County Historical oh. Society at 507-332-2121. Obviously, you know where to find us on the web. We're located at 1814 Northwest 2nd Avenue on the east end of the fairgrounds. You can find us here Monday through Friday from 9 to 4, other times by appointment. Rice County Historical Society, preserving the past for future generations. First United Bank and the Junior Board of Directors is proud to support Fairwell Community Television. One thing that's become popular here at the store that we sell is battery operated equipment. We've got the Eagle brand, snow blowers, blowers, trimmers, lawnmowers. If there's things like that that you're interested in, come in and check it out and see what we have. I um, just want to thank you for watching this month's edition of the FCTV News. We are proud supporters of FCTV for many years and um, we hope you have a great season and come in and if you need help with anything, we're here for you.